Welcome back astronomy students. Let's get right to this. We have a big sky to learn and that is the winter sky. The winter sky is dominated by the constellation Orion. Orion is almost the icon of all the northern hemisphere when you think about it, but Orion is very bright, very big, easiest to find in the sky. Let's go over how we find our good friend Orion. Uh, like I said, he's a very easy one to find. Just find these four stars in a large rectangle. One, two, three, and four. And then you'll know you found the correct rectangle because of the three stars in a line in the middle. Of course, the famous Orion's belt. So four stars in a rectangle, three stars through the middle, representing the body of Orion. Now, Orion is such a powerful and iconic constellation that we do learn a lot of stars in it. And we're going to go ahead and start around here at the corner and kind of go around uh, Orion. So starting with the top left, this is the star Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a very popular star. It is a super red giant star. It's at its end of its life, so we're sort of watching this star pass away or at least get old. And so a great example for that. The next star in the rotation would be Bellatrix. Bellatrix is the top right star of Orion. Probably most people have heard of this because if they at all have heard of Harry Potter, uh, Bellatrix is a character in it and uh, that author was very big into mythology and astronomy. So you see that a lot in her characters. Rigel is the star to the bottom right. It is a blue supergiant star and those are rare blue stars. Uh, they don't live very long, so there's very few examples of blue stars in our sky. So Rigel being blue and this dominant in, 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 in this great location makes Rigel a great star to know. And finishing off the rectangle is our star of Scythe. Really, we learned that to complete the rectangle. doesn't make sense just to learn three of the four. So we complete it off with Scythe. So going through that one more time, Betelgeuse top left. Bellatrix, top right, Rigel, bottom right, and Scythe, bottom left. Already mentioned, of course, through the middle of the constellation is Orion's Belt. Now, Orion's Belt is an asterism. Uh, these three stars right here, that, that is not a separate constellation. That is an asterism across the middle, uh, which is also why you'll notice that this title is in possession, Orion's Belt. Uh, this is one of the few things we do put possession on because it is an asterism, not uh, not real. I guess not a real constellation, a real item. What is a real item and probably the coolest one in Orion is the Orion Nebula. Uh, this is one of the most accessible nebulas to view. It is view, uh, visible with the naked eye, even better with a telescope. You'll see shortly. But there's the belt of Orion. Simply go down underneath it. And the sword of Orion is what is where Orion's nebula's Orion nebula lies. So we're just going to go and zoom in and take a look at this gorgeous, gorgeous nebula. Uh, like I said, probably one of the most accessible nebulas. Very easy to find because it's right there in the sword of Orion. And just look at that gorgeous uh, nebula there. So nebulas are the first stage of stellar evolution. Stars are being born. So you can see these three stars here in the center and that one up there. Those are brand new stars, only a few million years old. Yes, that sounds still very old. But remember, stars live to be billions, if not trillions of years old. So a couple million is nothing to a star. So as we back up, let's keep an eye on uh, the nebula. And you can see that it's just located just in the sword. There's the belt as we back up. And there it is. Orion Nebula. And all of that is what's in just Orion. After Orion, let's learn his two hunting dogs. Hunters never hunt alone. They always bring a good old trusted hunting dog. So let's do that. Let's follow the belt of Orion. Just trace that straight into a line and trace that line down. And as you continue down this road, you'll run into this bright star happens to be the brightest star in the entire nighttime sky, and that is Sirius. Sirius, the brightest star of the entire sky. No, it's not the North Star. Uh, you can see this is definitely in the south. 
the North Star is actually number 47, I believe it was, the 47th of all bright stars. So there's 46 stars brighter than the North Star. So big myth that the North Star is the brightest. Sirius is number one, the brightest nighttime star in our sky. Now Sirius is often called the dog star because it's part of the constellation Canis Major or the large dog. Canis means dog, major means big. This is not the first time we'll be using the, uh, the, pre, uh, the suffix of major in, uh, in the sky. So Canis Major, the large dog. So if I put this together, you can see the tracing. But from the belt of Orion, bring it down to here, there's the nose. This triangles the head of the dog, front legs, body, back legs, and tail. The planetarium does a good job. It leaves off the two ear stars, so the triangle's not formed. But nonetheless, it makes a pretty good dog. And that is Canis Major. Now, Canis Major is one thing. That's the big dog. But, of course, what's the point in calling it a big dog if there's not a little dog to go with it? And so we introduce you to Canis Minor. So Canis Major is bottom left of Orion. Canis Minor is up left of that. So I like to take the belt of Orion, go down, and bounce 90 degrees off of Sirius and head to this star right here in Canis Minor, and that is Procyon. So these three stars of Orion bounce off of Sirius and takes you to Procyon. Procyon is the alpha star of Canis Minor. Now here's the problem. Canis Minor is pretty pathetic. You can see it's only two stars, so this dog is pretty, uh, well, it's very small, hence Canis Minor. So you can see the picture, the dog is very, very small. It's considered to be the dog in training, uh, so, the hunter, uh, so the hunter gets this dog so it sort of can learn off the bigger dog of Canis Minor, uh, Canis Major. So that is the two hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor. With the two bright stars, Sirius, the brightest in the entire sky, and Procyon. After Orion and the two hunting dogs, let's take a look at our Zodiac constellations. The Zodiac constellation, there's two in the winter sky. Taking the belt of Orion, follow this, following it down takes you to Sirius, but I want you to follow it up this time. So take the belt of Orion, follow it up. And that's going to run you into this small letter V of stars. Very easy to find. The, the mind, as I've told you before, kind of loves shapes and V is a very distinct shape. Any letter really is. And this is the constellation of Taurus the Bull. Now the V represents the head of the bull. So if I show the picture here real quick, you can see that the top of the V are the two eyes. The bottom of the V is the snout of the bull. And then of course the horns reaching up to the very top up here. Very long horns in this bull. But all together, that is Taurus, the bull. Very distinct constellation, as I said. Easy to see that V. Just follow the belt of Orion up to the V, and there she be. Now, you do get to uh, know the star in its eye. Now, you'll notice it's got a reddish color to it. Uh, this is Aldebaran. Aldebaran is the eye of the bull. And its red color indicates, again, that it's more of a red giant star. Great stars for viewing. We love these red ones. One step further in Taurus, though, if we take this one step further, follow the belt of Orion, go beyond Taurus, you'll run into this small little, probably on the computer screen, just looks like a blip. But this is a cluster of stars we call the Pleiades. This is the Pleiades cluster. You'll maybe have known it as the Seven Sisters. However, the official name and the name that we uh, require on the quiz is Pleiades cluster. Now, what are we looking at? Well, let's take a closer look. So we've centered now onto the Pleiades cluster. We're going to zoom in and you'll see it's not just seven stars like the Seven Sisters. It is hundreds of stars uh, and these are brand new, not, not brand new stars, these are the stars a little older than uh, a nebula stage. So if the Orion nebulas where children are born or stars are born, think of this as children now in grade school. Uh, so they're young but they're still kind of huddled together 
in a group. So very young stars here in the Pleiades. As we pull back again, you'll get to take a look exactly where it is in relationship to Taurus. There's Orion's belt. Go across the Taurus, keep going, and get yourself to the Pleiades. Our other zodiac constellation for the sky is Gemini Twins. The easiest way to get to Gemini is follow the, use the uh, Orion, find the four stars in Orion, use the brightest two, Betelgeuse in the top left and Rigel to the bottom right, connect that into a line, go up from there, and that'll get you close. It's not an exact point, but it'll get you around here, which will then at least get you in the area of Gemini. From that point, these two stars will stick out. There's not too many bright stars left in the area, and so you have found yourself the constellation of Gemini. Now, Gemini are the twins. Each of those bright stars that you saw are each ahead of one of the twins. We have Pollux that sits on the left, and that is the name of the star Pollux. His body would be down here. And to the right is Castor, his body. Uh, his head, of course, is the bright star on the right, and then the body down there. So when you put it together, you get Pollux and Castor, the Gemini twins. Illustrated looks like that. Basically just two brothers sitting on uh, some sort of chair or bench, uh, and just together as the twins. And that is Gemini. Let us now take us to the last bright, vivid constellation, and that is going to be Origa. Auriga is located pretty high in the sky, almost pretty much straight up in the sky uh, once you get into midwinter. Uh, but you take three star, you take the four stars of Orion, the rectangle there, and only use the right two stars. There's Bellatrix, there's Rigel. Take those two stars, go up from there, and you see you run right into Auriga. And that is the pronunciation of that. Most people do mispronounce it when they first see the word. And so it is, again, Auriga. So Auriga is this pentagon-type shape in the sky. And you can see one, two, three, four, five. That's the dominating shape that you see with Auriga. Now, it is the charioteer. So the this tracing is supposed to represent, like, these four, these three lines, I guess, are supposed to represent the chariot. And then all these stars in here are supposed to be the person riding in it. However, the picture they show is actually of a naga, and that is the half, uh, half man, half snake creature. Uh, but you can see he is holding the reins, and so he's playing the charioteer. But you'll also notice that he's holding a set of goats. And that's uh, poignant because the brightest star in Auriga is Capella. And Capella is a very bright star altogether. It's in, definitely in the top Five, I think, top five of bright stars. Uh, so a very bright star, uh, but Capella translates into mother goat. And so it makes sense then why Auriga would have been holding on to those goats. Uh, the other thing we wanted to point out real quick is the fact that uh, you'll often hear these three stars in this triangle called the kids because they would be the baby goats to Capella. Uh, but that is not required to know. Capella, though, is. And that completes us with Auriga and with Capella. And finally, we come to the final two constellations. Now, these are solely because of story. I love these two constellations because of that. We're going to start with the constellation uh, right below Orion. It's right down there, and his name is Lepus the Bunny. Now, Lepus the Bunny, I like him because he explains, it's one of the stories that explains why Orion is actually uh, uh, kneeling down. So if I, uh, let's bring back Orion here for a second. And if I show you the picture, you'll notice his top two stars are his shoulders. There's his belt, of course. And then his bottom two are his feet. But if you think of him as standing, then this doesn't make sense because the feet would be too close to this waist. That would make his legs too short. And so the only way that these bottom two stars are his feet is if he's kneeling down, which you can see in the picture. So this, so Lepus the bunny helps us explain why uh, Orion is kneeling. Because if you think about it, he's hunting the rabbit. Rabbits like to burrow. And so he's down low looking for the rabbit. This is also connected to the dogs. We have Canis Major right on the tail of Lepus the bunny. 
And so he know he can smell the bunny. He knows he's underground. So he's he's on the trail. And then of course you have the new puppy, who's being distracted by a leaf or something, and he's off no off in the side, not even looking at it. So it's a cute little story that explains why Orion is kneeling, and it connects the dogs, especially Canis Major, with the position next to Lepus. Lepus itself is. Basically a bow tie, I think is what most people kind of see it as. You got this, or maybe a butterfly. That's another. Uh, uh, that's another way people kind of see this. Uh, this side is you know one wing. This would be the other wing. Uh, but basically, you look for the little tiny bow tie right underneath Orion, and you found yourself Lepus the bunny. After Lepus the bunny, the other constellation we learn is Eridanus the river. This is another story that explains why is Orion kneeling down. So if I uh, show you the image here, you'll see it's a very meandering river, as rivers tend to do. But if I go ahead and add Orion to this, you'll notice that he's now kneeling to access water in the stream. So these are two different constellations and two different story sets that explains why is Orion kneeling and thus putting his feet star a little closer to the belt than they should. So just two great little constellations that I love to end with, and that is Lepus the bunny and Eridanus the river.